Hello, everyone, and welcome to another live session of Zeiss Micro Minutes. My name is Joe Favada, and today I'm excited to talk to you about automation and TEM lamella prep. We have a lot of exciting things to show you, including the workflow of setting up and executing an automated lamella prep. Um, we also uh, have the um, uh, workflow to show you, and uh, we want to get things started with showing uh, a little bit about the Crossbeam Sample Fab. The Crossbeam Sample Fab being um, the solution that allows you to perform this automated lamella prep from start to finish. Uh, I'd like to watch this video together with you. Uh, let's get started. Very cool. I like how that video really concisely shows the uh, automation with the Crossbeam Sample Fab. So uh, in a nutshell, really the, the three main processes in the automation can be done in a, in a continuous manner, steps one through three of site preparation, lift out, and lamella thinning, or they can be done in a modular fashion, one with the other, but not the third, for example. Um, I've gotten uh, questions from a lot of people about, you know, how quick or slow the automation is. I like to give uh, a general sort of sense of how long it might take. Um, this is for a silicon lamella that's a standard size that's maybe 10 or 12 microns, but all in all, letting the automation run is about 45 minutes, which having myself done countless manual uh, lamella prep workflows, um, it's, it's nice to see that it's uh, at that sort of quick uh, time scale. So this is a couple of examples of showing the modularity. Um, just as a proof of concept, we have on the left side showing if you were to perform the site preparation and just the thinning, and on the right side is the full automation um, from lift out from uh, site preparation, lift out all the way to thinning. In this case, it's shown on a, uh, a logic sample. Um, I think it's it's a, an SRAM uh, sample. And so these examples have so far been a uh, single site, but really where the power comes in for this automation is where you want to do batch lamella or um, imagining setting this to run overnight so that, you know, 10 or more lamella can be uh, completed when otherwise the system is not going to be utilized. And so this slide is just showing some examples of these batch runs um, of, you know, five lamella lifted out, um, stacked on top of each other on this uh, on this grid finger, and actually at multiple grid fingers. 
Um, with the crossbeam sample fab, there's actually a yield promise that comes with it, which um, promises a certain um, effectiveness in the um, uh, site preparation and lift out um, for this sort of unattended access. you also notice that uh, in the workflow video that I'm about to show that the um, user interface is consolidated so that SEM, FIB, an internal camera, and a navigation image are all in one sort of view. Um, so you can concisely just drag and drop the shapes you want and allow the automation to run. Um, as I just pointed to about multiple sites, you see in the bottom right, there's the ability to call um, you know, multiple sites to be run in a serial manner. And then for each of those sites, you can have you know, the exclusion or inclusion of any number of steps, such as the site preparation, the lift out, uh, and the thinning. So let's watch the setup and execution of uh, an automated lamella. So this is uh, a uh, lamella where we're doing the full workflow, including thinning. And so when we do thinning, there's an additional preparation step for the grid of creating a flat surface. So you can tell that there's already been a little bit of milling onto that grid finger. And then from there, uh, it's as simple as setting up a fiducial mark and then saving this site as the thinning position. So if this was now extended to multiple sites, we would uh, prepare multiple uh, thinning save points for each of those lamella in a serious ma serial manner. So that's now saving it. And just as we do for the thinning, we're going to do the same for the, uh, we call the docking garage because we're going to park the lamella for welding. Um, and again, that too is going to be shown here for just a single site, but can be extended to multiple positions in the event you want to run 5, 10, or so many lamella. The process of, a lot of saving those points is really just looking at it in both the SEM and FIB and placing these, these markers on it, and then clicking Save. And the last part of setup is just defining where you want your actual lamella to be. Um, you can call upon pre-saved lamella recipes from a, a predefined list that perhaps a super user has developed. And then it's a matter of just applying the save thin position and the save docking position to that lamella. And then you have yourself a site. And this can be extended to multiple sites, of course. Um, within each site, you do have freedoms to make small tweaks as well, such as the thinning window size and thickness of the lamella after thinning. And then once you add it to your position list, you just click start and the automation will take it from there. The automation, as the name implies, is autonomous, so you can leave. There is no semi-automated uh, nature to it where you have to you know, be present to make corrections and checkpoints on things. Um, we do have the innate ability on our crossbeam to watch while we're performing any sort of milling or deposition operation, so you can watch. And in fact, that's what we're doing in the top left corner. But it's completely optional, and it does not affect automation. So if you do choose to leave, such as I often do, um, fret not, there are images that are going to be saved uh, at different progress points, and these can be accessed by the user you know, after the fact or during the run so that you have a sense of, you know, if you do five lamella, how did lamella number three do during lift out? Well, there's going to be a set of images that uh, correlate to that lamella and to that step for checking it out. Uh, this is now just showing the cutout and lift out of the lamella. And then the next step is to bring it over to the grid. And when it now docks to the grid, you're going to see um, a nice uh, straightness of the lamella as it uh, attaches to the grid. There's a, a, a very nice uh, proprietary methodology for um, docking the lamella so that it is robust and, and straight when we uh, weld it. And so that obviously correlates to better success rate when, when we're talking about thinning the lamella, making sure it's straight. And then lastly, the thinning process, which is handled by the automation. A user can specify a number of uh, milling steps, different overtilts, and different probes. And in the end, you can aim for that specific thickness uh, target. Now, for this example, I think I aim for about 150 nanometers. Um, and that's because this is um, you know, a sample that I'd like to uh, hit a specific feature that is somewhere within that thickness. Uh, and for that, I'd like to use my eyes to actually monitor when I hit that feature of interest. And we're going to talk a little bit about how you can follow up this automation with um, very powerful uh, manual polishing. 
And so you saw at the end there uh, some transparency in the lamella at that acceleration voltage, so it was about 150 nanometers uh, in thickness. All right. So, uh, as I mentioned during that, uh, the execution of that workflow, you have this great repository of all of the images that were captured automatically in the software of the lift out, of the thinning, and you can uh, have a full uh, sense of how these overnight runs might go, um, even though you're not there because you have all this nice cataloging. It's helpful for making reports too if someone was ever curious about the individual steps. Um, a, a point about the robustness of the workflow. Well, uh, having done, as I mentioned, countless manual lamella uh, lift outs and, and thinnings, uh, you know, one thing that's on my mind usually is, is the manipulator sharp and, and ready to lift out uh, a lamella. Well, uh, with this workflow, because of the way in which we designed it and, um, and the, 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 uh, both on the hardware side and the software side, there's... Uh, you can go a very long time without having to reshape your micromanipulator tip. Um, the images on the left side show all these different lamellas that were lifted out uh, with different tip geometries. Um, generally speaking, you can go about 80-ish lamella before it's recommended to do a, uh, a manual um, uh, polishing and shaping of the micromanipulator tip. So that really bodes well for if you're trying to do high throughput work. Um, you do have the ability to do all of this, all these lift outs without having to spend time to reshape the needle might, that you might have to do in a manual workflow. Uh, I want to just also point out that bottom right image is uh, the, on the left side is that micromanipulator uh, tip, and it's it's tough to call it a tip now. It's it's pretty chunky and, and broad, um, but nonetheless a successful lift out, which is again owed to the shape of the tip. Uh, as formed during the workflow and um, our software um, that leverages uh, autom uh, machine learning to uh, identify if the uh, lamella is welded and all these other uh, important details. So uh, the automation taking you to a specific thickness might be good enough. That might be all that you really need. You can bring it to your TEM, you can bring it uh, to do STEM and SEM with your crossbeam. Uh, but sometimes you're trying to endpoint a specific feature that exists in space. It might be a defect, it might be a row of um, fins on a, on a um, logic device, it could be um, a row of vertical channels in a 3D NAND. Well, you have this amazing uh, tool set that exists on all crossbeams to be able to watch while you're milling at any beam condition without any delay because there's no interlacing and with multiple detectors. So the first one, detector I'm going to show allows you to see the surface of the polish face. So you can see those uh, fins, for example, in the logic device appear and disappear. And you can you, you have the freedom to stop it when you want. Um, the other uh, detector, which will come in a second, gives you uh, information on the thickness uh, of the lamella. And so the two levels of information, what we see on the face and how thick we are, give us all that we need to make the right lamella at the right location at the right thickness. So this is an example on a seven nanometer node SRAM um, FinFET logic device. Um, and we're gonna let this go and just show. So as you zoom in um, at any acceleration voltage on the FIB or SEM, even low KV polishing, we can see um, the evolution of the structure and we might see, I think uh, some fins will start showing up here in a second. Yeah, right here. So at any point we can choose to freeze uh, our milling and stop and go from the other side. And so total control over where we make the right lamella. And this can follow that automation uh, in the event you want to um, endpoint on a specific feature. The left side now is showing a different detector which gives you transparency information um, related to the thickness. And so the combination of these, this two of, the, of these two levels of information allow you to make that right lamella at the right location and at the right thickness. Uh, the last point I want to make about following up the automation um, with you know, perhaps some manual uh, guidance would be the ability to manipulate the beam while polishing. 
Now, uh, for the previous example of that logic device, or maybe <clears throat> for solid state memory, if we're looking at 3D NAND, um, or other applications that you might be facing where it's important to, to make the lamella straight on an array of features, to have good planarity and alignment. Well, this sort of ability to uh, manipulate and nudge the beam is critical. Um, yes, we can go up and down, left and right, but uh, I'd argue one of the most critical things is this ability to rotate the patterning as we're polishing. So uh, it's not as if there's a fixed point in the middle of the box and it just rotates, because then you'd have the problem of like jumping the lamella on one end of your, of your polishing and result in losing the lamella. Instead, uh, we have at one end the polishing is fixed, as shown on the right side here, let's say the, the right end of the polish is fixed, and then we can rotate counterclockwise. Um, so we maintain a nice tangential connection with the polish face while changing the orientation. Um, it's very critical so that you don't jump the lamella and you get uh, the planarity that you need uh, as you polish into the sample and isolate the features that you care about. Okay. So with that, um, I will transition to seeing if there are any questions in the chat. While uh, that loads in, I want to point you in the direction of some very uh, important, valuable links. So uh, right above me, we have some upcoming skill builder workshops. These are both in-person and virtual. Uh, they Across light microscopy, X-ray microscopy, and electron microscopy, you can sign up for these classes and workshops that uh, help you brush up on your skills. Perhaps it's been a while since you received training and you wanted to uh, freshen up on your ability to train others and your ability to operate the, the systems. Uh, this is a great resource. Uh, the middle QR code is the Zeiss portal. Among many, uh, many things within the Zeiss portal, there is this free repository of training videos. So again, another good resource for our customers if you wanted to um, see uh, both basic all the way to uh, advanced topics across EM, electron microscopy, XRM, X-ray microscopy, and um, LM, light microscopy. And lastly, the farthest QR code is for our upcoming live streams. So uh, you also can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we have streams every Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, again, across our full portfolio, if you have any questions and want to interface with experts from the applications team, this is a great opportunity to do so. All right, just checking the chat now. The moment, no. All right, well, then with that, I'd like to thank everyone for joining. I appreciate you taking the time, and I uh, hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.